Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of the beginning again uh, for people that weren't here, and then I'll, I'll skip over the uh, start part. So I'm going to cover the server system thinking in brief part again. Uh, we had a um, couple of hours on conversation for orientation where, where I explained four things which I'll tell you about. Um, I'm not going to re-explain them. Um, and we'll get into the conversation for possibilities and talk about futures, and I'll show you some of the stuff that's coming up. Um, so um, I've been encouraging, I'm trying to encourage a community around service system thinking. Uh, and uh, to describe what service system thinking is, I'm going to do it in two representations. One is an intentional representation, but an object process representation. Um, the uh, intentional representation comes from the service science community, and the object process representation, in fact, comes from the systems engineering community. So in an intentional representation, uh, service systems thinking is a resource that can be applied by service scientists, managers, engineers, and designers. And so um, I'm using, in this case, the I-star notation, which comes out of service <coughs> science uh, and computer science. Uh, but in effect, we're looking at a system where there's a service beneficiary and the service provider. Um, we have these uh, soft goals, so these are the people. We have some soft goals here, which are qualitative. Uh, where the beneficiary uh, has some purpose or interests, and they uh, collaborate or uh, co-produce with the um, with the provider, uh, and get some exp expected portion from the joint benefits. Uh, they do it by applying some resources jointly with the other parties, uh, and as a capacity for uh, systems integration, they have as a resource. Um, and so, uh, the essential idea uh, behind this is that we're looking at developing uh, service system thinking across science, management, engineering, and design. Um, and uh, speaking to some of the work that's been done previously, the service scientist um, has a, uh, uh, tends to work towards improving understanding, map mapping natural history of service systems, uh, validating mechanisms and making predictions. The service manager wants to improve capabilities, improve progress measures, optimize investment strategies. Service engineer wants to improve control, optimize resources. And the service designer wants to improve the experience and explore the possibilities. But the possibility that we're talking about now is that we'd actually have service system thinking as a foundation across all of these to break down some of the um, disciplinary issues that we have. Can I suggest something? Sure. Those roles are so much in flux and in development that yeah. they're really kind of abstracted today. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're talking about this, this, the service system language as being in an Alexander type of pattern language. Yeah. So it's generative, yeah. so perhaps this kit of parts, as it, as it might be, could have a way to form, maybe not just, I mean, those are like archetypal roles, so maybe there could be a way that the patterns could actually form the appropriate roles out of, as long as they're consistent with the patterns or the principles. Yeah, you're, you're jumping way ahead. <laughs> I just realized that there are very, people call themselves service designers, but in the design community, there's actually very few people that do consistent, really service design work. It's yeah. so much of an, and I'm, uh, of an emerging role, and I know it's the same in that, you know, the other fields as well. What, what that would mean would be very inconsistent right now. Yeah. And so yeah. emerging. Okay. Yeah. So just. Okay. I see you're going up. So. <laughs> um, and so, in an object process representation, uh, service system thinking. Um, uh, I, I've been using. Uh, so I was at the uh, ECOSI International Symposium at the end of June, and uh, uh, most of the work at ECOSI has been moving towards SysML. Um, but uh, there is a uh, splinter group that's been working on object process methodology, which I, I, so I, I thought I'd try it and just see what it, um, what works. And, and so the way notation works is objects are rectangles, processes are ovals, and then you have these sort of things like the agent handles the process, and the object is exhibited by an object or process, and the process is exhibited by an object or process. And so that's where the arrows go. So uh, what this says is system think, system, service system thinking is a process, uh, and uh, it's handled by a service system thinking community, which is a thing, an object. Service system thinking exhibits uh, four things. Firstly, systems thinking. Uh, secondly, the service science management, engineering, and design, actually the feedback on that, um, that, is, uh, um, that was started at, uh, around 2003 when Jim Sporer was visiting the ISSS um, uh, at Crete. 
um, generative pattern language out of the Christopher Alexander work, and then multiple perspectives open collaboration. Um, and the way that we're approaching the discussion today, uh, I already covered the conversational orientation, which covered all the history of these four things. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, switch over to the conversation for possibilities and focus on each one of these. And I'm going to focus, actually this is the most concrete, and then kind of work backwards through it. So I'm going to flip down here. Oh, way down. I like that you use the, uh, the language action perspective distinctions of the, the, of the four conversations as a way to structure the agenda. Yeah. I haven't actually seen anyone do that before. Yeah, I was trying to figure how I was going to get through all this, so yeah. let's do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's, let's work mostly on the wiki. Yeah, but he they publish that together, but that part of it is so, so here's um, four proposals with services and thinking at its inception. Um, what we could do is, um, so the, the idea that, we, that we're going to work on uh, just in, in the um, orientation was that we wanted to move towards multiple perspectives over collaboration. So firstly, we could have federated, author, author, federated authored content on open source platforms. And so I'll go in, I'll, I'll deal a little bit with the federated wiki on that. Uh, second thing is for generative pattern language. Um, I, I think we need reorientation because Alexander has moved. So Alexander's uh, pattern language book in 1977 and the timeless way of building in 1979 is what we're, where most of the software development and Gang of Four book were working. And, um, and so since then he's actually moved on to some ideas and trying to separate them out. Um, the idea of unfolding wholeness is, um, is something that he's trying to clean up the language on. Um, layering systems of centers. Uh, there's, there's centers, and actually particularly in the two, 2012 Aishin uh, book, um, I, I'll, I'll talk about how he does um, uh, that. And then uh, creating interactive value is going to be a question about how we take the Norman Ramirez work and, uh, and apply that. Uh, for service system management engineering design, uh, we have transdisciplinary cooperation on service system improvement and trying to work across these communities. So far, I've been doing it um, as a messenger going back and forth. Um, hopefully, uh, when I get to the stage where we actually start forming groups, then we'll talk about who's doing what. And then for system thinking, uh, I, I was looking at evolving from the system thinking tradition. Um, so um, people, uh, this is actually doing it in a serious way, uh, going back to the Tavistock research and extending from there. Okay. So let's start off firstly on the uh, on the federated author content. So um, the, the technology you're seeing right now is actually the smallest federated wiki. Um, and what it allows you to do, is, uh, and, and um, the, the way the federated wiki works is that everyone has their own website. So uh, I would have mine, Peter would have his, um, Ken could have his, but the technology is such that um, that when you, you can actually drag and drop across the content. So uh, I have my content, um, it's actually masked. This is uh, R, on RH Cloud, so it's a Red Hat Cloud. Uh, and it's actually a free site, and there are instructions on how to do this. But mine is on coevolving.com. Uh, so Peter would have his wiki on redesign.com as an example. And what you can do between this is you can actually, Peter could, could um, look and he says, Oh, well, I see David actually got some work. And what you, what you can do is drag the content from one website to the other. No problem, it just drags on there. Uh, the second part is that you can curate it. And so what happens is that you don't just put a link to it. So what happens when you do a link to it is at a point in time. And so if I keep writing and you, and you put a link to it, it actually links to that point. But a year later, I could have moved from that point. But what you can do is you can actually curate it. And what, and what that does is it brings a copy of my page over from coevolving.com over to redesign.com. Oh, with attribution, does it carry? Yes, it has the link on it. So, oh. uh, so it's a bit yeah. like Ted Nelson's bi-directional linking then. Yeah. The original Xanadu. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you can um, uh, amend the content. And so if we go to a, uh, let's see what I have here. So the page link drag, this is, 
uh, Ward. Let me actually do it over here. We do have really original idea for the web. It's supposed to be bi-directional with, with hypertext mm. in the 60s. That's how Ted Nelson saw it. It's taken a little while. For it. anyway, so I'm not sure I'm getting this. Does that imply a, 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 um, an automatic updating? It, it's done in the background as part of the technology. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, so let me um, do it. Uh, am I on the, yeah, I'm on the PC here, right? So this is an open source wiki that you would, you could install for your website. And if, you, if you're part of this, or if No, I get that video. Yeah, yeah, it was more yeah. the, the frozen in time. Okay, I was trying to um, well, okay, not frozen so this is on. It sounds like it could be either way. So let me actually play, I'll just play. Let me show you how I can combine the works of my friends and colleagues into my own in a creative way. Here I'm working on a pattern. This, uh, I'm calling it recreational hollow. This would be the space between uh, my house and my neighbors. And I want it to uh, draw from several different pattern languages. Patterns being, you know, an idea worth knowing and applying. This is a very inspirational pattern language. It talks a lot about uh, well, this positive outdoor space has got my attention. Uh, this is a similar work. This is a Reliable Prosperity, and it talks about beauty and play. So these are two things that I want to bring together in my own pattern. I've mentioned them here, but if I click on this, it, it can't find it because it's on a different tab. So all I need to do is bring this work together. Let's, uh, let's, let's start over here, and I'll just grab this, and I just drag it over there and drop it in here. And there it is, positive outdoor space. Now, if I go back here, even as I forget that, I have that close at hand. So if I say, look at my recreational hollow, positive outdoor space. Well, it's in my neighborhood on my screen, but it's not yet in my document. Let's work on that a little bit. I so so this is on two different this websites. Is uh, this is on his one domain, this is on another domain. Outdoor space that you might concern yourself with. And I'm just going to add my own pattern in down here where it says garden wall. I'm going to write uh, uh, my own pattern, recreational hub. So there it is. When I click on it, it goes back to my pattern. More importantly, this pattern is now quoted in my own work with my modification. Of course, uh, I acknowledge where the source here and, and the uh, edit that I've made. So that's all recorded for me automatically. So uh, let, let's try a beauty and play, do it a little bit differently. Let me uh, notice that it's not here yet. If I just take this and drag it over here to my space, drop it in, there it is. I can make that mine by just clicking that. That just makes it part of my site. Now when I come over here and click Beauty and Play, there it is. Again, I never forget where it came from. So it, it, you have to do this stuff to actually get it, but, what, but the, the um, interesting part, so I've, I've been on weekly calls with Ward now trying to understand this, and he's looking for a community active use of te technology. Uh, and so, um, so what he says is he wants to get himself out of the wiki business. Mm -hmm. So essentially the idea is that uh, if, if I see something on Peter's site that I really like, in effect by doing the first reference and by dragging and dropping it, then I, I don't lose it as a bookmark, but then I can curate it. And so I can bring a copy of Peter's work onto my website. And, and then, um, if, if he update if, if I update it he will actually see on his website a newer flag that right. says that that right. and so now we can actually um, he can he can change and I can change and what will happen is that we're in parallel we're both writing on content and, and it's signaling both. each other well you may, uh, there's a signal between them but it's not overwriting no no no, no. yeah right I mean, it's alerting you to check it out yes yeah. yes yeah. yes yes all of these websites are on a single platform. No. Right? Can, any, any website can be involved in it. Yes. Yeah. So th this is all new. I had to, I spent a lot, so it spent me, it took me four weeks to get this understood 
uh, because all these are new web technologies, all using um, JavaScript, uh, uh, it's on Node.js, and so it's all new cloud stuff. And so I'm used to doing PHP websites and stuff like that, and it's very straightforward. This is a whole new platform, so I'm running it on, um, on the free Red Hat cloud um, called OpenShift. And so I have directions on, on how to do that, uh, how to do the installation. So um, you could help your community with the installs once we, yes. you, know, you and, can federate and, the installs. Right, so here, here's the wiki OpenShift. So here's how you do it. And so there's two ways to do it. So one is if you want your site to be rhcloud.com, so mine is actually coevolving.rhcloud, then you can just uh, do this. You can, you can just sign in and you can actually just create it. it it'll actually, there's, there's actually a routine, so it's a one button installation. What I've done instead is I actually have it on my domain, so I actually have it as fed.coalvolving.com, and that gets a little more involved. Uh, but I figured out how you do that, and there's instructions to do that. Yeah, we'll want to do that over time. But, but if you look at, so, so this page, if you look at the bottom, here it says it's on fed.coalvolving.com. If I want to look at the original content, you see it's on wiki.paul90 RH Cloud. Hmm. Uh, let's see, how do I get to it? Oh, hold on. Let's see. Older. There it is. So this is on his site. This is the original content he wrote, and what I did was I curated it over onto my site, and then I improved it. So someone going and looking at this site, and see, see, they would see that there's this newer up here, and they, uh. if they click on the newer, they'll end up over on my site. But this is the original content that Paul had written. Yeah. So I just want to open that in a new, uh, a new window. So here it is. So that's over on Paul's site. And that's what the page looks like over there. This can be this approach could be the basis for the people's internet. When when we get tired of using the commercial internet yes. and, and all the monopolized services and the monetized use of our data, and when we get an alternative ISPs and, and fiber, we need to have, you know, tools that can be shared across, you know, the people's cloud and and a, a federated approach to the internet. I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. Or being one of the originators of, of, of uh, you know, these technologies. Yeah. You know, would, uh, an internet pioneer would be looking at that. Ken? Did, did you say that all of the wiki stuff is on one particular cloud? Uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be. It could be on anywhere. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, Ward runs a version that's run in Ruby on, a, on and he's got multiple wikis. And so what he does is he has uh, the entire pattern language, the 1977 book, on a, a version that is not public. And then when he wants to bring stuff out, he copies it over from one of his, his private wikis over into something that's public. And, and you can actually see the link that goes back into the private, but you can't get there. Mm. Uh, so one of the things that Ward says is, is trying to put himself out of the wiki business is that the, he believes that if, val if content is valuable, people will, con will copy the page over. They will curate the page. Mm, right. And so if I like what Peter's written, I will put it on my website because I could find it faster that way, right? I don't have to go searching all over the place. Plus the links in the background are maintained so that if I don't do any updates, it's just another version. And if neither one of us updates, then, then it, it, it gets retained. When yes? you carry over the copy, can you edit the copy after you carry it over? Yes. So, it, it, I mean, I'm interested in preserving authorship. Yes. You do. You can preserve the authorship. Space. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so you can go back through the history. At the bottom here is the uh, what's called the journal. So let me go back to uh, where was I? So different browser. That's Paul's. That's Paul's. So it's mine. Okay. So. Uh, if I go here at the bottom, there's a journal, and so these are all the edits, and so, uh, so you can see this is like this is lighting up here. So, so this is the last edit, which was on 
this page and you go like this and it links up to both. So I can actually click on that and it has a date. Or I can go way back, there's a date. Right. So one of the things is that this journal gets filled up um, quite often, but as part of the technology, you kind of put up with that because you always want the traceability of where the content was. Yeah, so if you install it locally, so if we have servers like the Global Agora server, we could install um, the fed, yeah. fed.globalagoras and have our own yeah. wiki that could then be shared with other people in the network. Well, presumably, or it OpenShift. It carries Creative Commons attribution over. Yes. Which is great. Yeah. That, well, that, that's one of the conditions. As soon as you start editing, it's a Creative Commons. Yeah. License, yeah, 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 and the uh, the code itself is MIT licensed, so, uh, yeah. What's a whole Google game? Again, you can just drag images. Well, it, it reminds me of the excitement I got when I first found I could have two Windows Explorer windows open, <laughs> <laughs> copy files from. From one directory to another, which is sort of trivial now, but yeah. when it first starts, you, the, you know, that's it's such productivity. Yeah, instead of, you know, cut and paste. Okay, so let's uh, see what Between Ward is doing. The drag from, 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 from Explorer. Here, here's a, yeah. the sort of page that a new user will encounter. And uh, it, uh, it, it includes this search. And one thing we might search for is something like uh, pages. Let's see what kind of pages we can find. We don't find any pages, but we do learn that we have six pages that we're searching here. Uh, one of those pages down here is mentioned is the uh, 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 how to wiki. And so if I click that, I'll get, uh, and, and it found this by the way, because this, this front page was forked from this green site, and that green site was forked from the brown site. So, so all of a sudden, I've, I've uh, brought some new content into my wiki, and so if I now search for pages, uh, I find a lot more. I'm now looking at 53 pages, and 16 of them uh, mention something interesting. Now, as I, as I look through here, oh, here's something interesting in the help. Oh, most of this is help information. Uh, something about searching sites. And this is a, a lot of nice documentation. It says uh, how search works, uh, how to use it, a lot of different things, including uh, searching for sites, and, and how to write, um, how to write content that is particularly good for searching. But let's just peek over here, and we see just a tremendous collection of tremendous, like six different <laughs> collections of sites. I, I particularly like this work done by my friend uh, Michael Mahaffey, which is about patterns in the built world. And, and notice as I click on this, the uh, uh, my neighborhood is expanding here. I'm, I'm learning about sites if I look at, at uh, all this great stuff. Yeah, you can done, see it, it's loading more websites along the bottom here. Imported sites or maybe well, in a few that haven't been published. You can see oh. they're piling up down here. And, and, and this, this gives me a lot of place to look. And, and so now if I say pages, you know, look at all this content I have. And it's not even done loading. You know, it just goes on and on and on. So let's uh, try that one more time. <laughs> pages. And so 860 sites before we looked, we looked in uh, 464, so the last few were taking their time, and now are spread over 19, 19 sites. Now, this quickly becomes overwhelming, and, and you know, the Federation is small at the moment. But, but let me just go back to the beginning. When I click on that, it takes me back to the beginning, and so now I've got this kind of small world, and, and I'm going to show you what I would do to uh, uh, start contributing uh, to the, to the uh, Federation by just organizing it for my own use. So I'll say, uh, let's make a collection of my favorite, favorite sites. And uh, uh, let's say, found my first day. So that's a, a nice 
next little paragraph. This is what I'm gonna do. It says, tell me who I am and what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go look for sites. And you know what? There's not really much to look for yet. So I'm just gonna start by hitting that, uh, uh, j just loading up the, uh, the, the help text because that was useful. Then I'll call it my own page. It says I can't even find that. So let's just go ahead and create that. And it's kind of an empty page. But let's just, let's just try looking for sites again. And when I look for sites, uh, oh, look at all this stuff. Oh, where is that? Uh, uh, search for sites. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll come over here and uh, look at uh, this list of sites in pattern languages. Pattern languages are important and Word does a lot for pattern languages. So, uh, uh, now maybe something like uh, uh, pages, what do I find? Lots of good stuff about it. Let's try something about coding. coding. A little less about coding here. Let's, uh, let's, let's just go back to where my own collection was. And I'll just say, let's look for coding again. And uh, coding tips, that sounds good. Let's put that online. So it's so automatically it's creating pages to the right as it links, right? And then you scroll. Uh, or horizontal yeah. scrolling. I mean, uh, yeah. I it's over there. That's yeah. interesting. If I, uh, if I grab that, now I get into the situation where uh, this this is a little long, so I'm just going to edit that description to, uh, to be a little shorter because uh, because this is my own wiki and I like it to make it kind of short. Now, you know, as I see this, uh, you know, maybe programming is a better word. Programming. You know, so now I find uh, 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 all the 99 bottles of beer. That's a, well, maybe that's not. Uh, let's, let's find something a little more colorful. Pair of programs. That looks good. So, so here I've made a collection of pages, which I call a collection of my favorite sites. Now if I go back to zero again, I only have these original two sites. But the minute I click on my collection, notice that I am already in my own neighborhood of sites that I found useful. Not only that, I publish this collection just implicitly by being in the federated wiki and someone who finds my site by maybe searching for sites. Can, uh, uh, can can find the corner of the uh, of the federation that I found interesting, and and that's how this all feeds into uh, uh, one another. How big is this federation? <laughs> uh, it's it's not that large. People are just starting up, and so so this is the the problem is that you have to get your head wrapped around doing some of this stuff. Um, and uh, and my experience so far is that the people who have been working on it are developers. They're not. Yeah. authors right um, and so so the code works but um, the uh, pattern language stuff is stuff that they've been uh, Michael Mahaffey has been doing but then it's like who's he collaborating with mm -hmm. right so you can get to his site and you can read it but then it's like are you going to improve on his content do you find it interesting or are you going to curate it well, how open would it be for making improvements well enhancements to uh, formatting uh, layout. I know Ward prefers it to be a certain way, but how fixed would that be in the future? Well, so uh, he's he's interested in having people develop. So everything's on GitHub. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, but you you start running into the um, um, the issues with coding. So um, so he originally he had implemented everything in Ruby on the back end uh, with a Sinatra framework. So he's not actually using Rails. Uh, so everything's stored in flat files. Uh, on, on your server. Uh, on the front end, it's CoffeeScript, which uh, creates JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And so um, and, and so there's been a lot of work 
um, on the front end. Uh, he's now working on the back end again. They've got to go back for it. Curate images. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, can you select parts of images though too on this? Would there be a way to hot, or is it basically images of as a single object? Single object. Yeah. You drag and drop the single object yeah. on it. That's what you I've done. Do, yeah. Yeah. So much but control. Everything is editable. When you move it from here to there, you can edit it. But yes. What controls on that? Uh, so, um, so if you so there's there's two things that happen. One is that uh, the browser technologies has advanced. So you're if you do not log in, it does it on your local browser. And so it's it's stored just on your browser, which means that if you close your browser and you lose everything, you know, like it won't be there. You have to remember to save. Right. So so what you want to do is is you want to get your own site and then log in on your site, uh, and then it's preserved. So th th this is one of those things that that the local changes will happen, and so it's actually possible for for you to work offline. Like if you, if you've now got started in your browser. You can keep editing stuff, and you just keep editing it. You think you're actually working on stuff, but it's just in your browser. It's not on the server. That's one of the confusing parts of it. It's a feature, and it's a bug, whatever you want to call it. You know, so. Would it be possible to read content that was actually composed in the wiki to just to display it um, in, into WordPress as a blog automatically? I mean, is that have you found a way to link back to your WordPress? Uh, I, I haven't done that yet. Actually, my focus has been the other direction, which has been uh, this is good for uh, for um, artifactual sort of stuff, but it's not very good for dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so, what we've been work, what we've been doing is um, that would be nice. What we've been doing is sorry, I'm on. Let me close that. The discussions. Close that. Close that. Lost here. Okay, so uh, that's one of the things we use wikis for is the built-in, you know, discussion, and that it gives you. Uh, well, actually, I, I think I could do it on digest. Let's see. Yeah. So, so this is what these are the calls that we've been having, and I started taking notes. And so, what I've been doing is um, this has been actually on. Uh, an Etherpad site. So I, I created pad.ether, no, pad.colevolving.com. It's called Etherpad? What is that? I, yeah, I, 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 I installed my own Etherpad. And so I thought I had done it on here. But, uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the content from the Etherpad discussion. Okay. And so, so everyone has access to it, but it, it actually is not on. Uh, it, it's not on um, this site. Where am I? Go back to the beginning. <coughs> so you can start here from the video chat. And you know, the digests. And so originally we had this, and I didn't. This is the discussion we were having. I, I wrote this, and then I said, okay, let's start using the Etherpad. And so this, was, this is from the Etherpad exporter. So here it is. I installed the code from Etherpad. So the, the reason we're doing Etherpad, and, and one of the this is one of the um, the end user questions that uh, the ward has is to, should someone write a translator so it makes it easier to make the Etherpad export and onto a wiki page? It's not bad. The the, the um, this actually works right now, uh, but from a federated wiki perspective, this is actually not. This is all one block. It's not separate paragraphs, uh, which means when you try to drag or drop something, it drag or drop the whole thing. Right. Right, so I, I could go through it, and th I'm not even so. Here I am. I'm not even logged in. If I go in here and, uh, and and I can edit, this is what's on here, right? And here's the original content. 
but like to be able to come in here and actually do something like uh, supposed to do that. Let's try this. Now, can you edit just? You can edit just text when you just type in, but then does it format automatically, or do you go in? I mean, is there a format template, or do you format in HTML? So uh, right now. Uh, there is some simple editing and it, but it'll actually support full HTML. And this is one of the things that um, they have questions about because uh, they're thinking about reducing it down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if I look at uh, how to wiki, uh, you can add text, double back for create, add formatting, so this is where you get into it. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Just using basic HTML heading, uh, heading tags. Yeah, yeah. Emphasis. Yeah. And so they're, they're trying to stay away from doing full HTML, but since I've been using tables, uh, I've actually been encouraging to uh, at least leave the HTML so I can do the tables. But there's no visual editor yet. Yet. Well, I, again, so this is about simplicity, and so I don't... You, you could build a visual editor, like, if you, if you really want to do it, um, and you could keep it in sync with all of it. Because in effect, what, what Ward is trying to control is the, uh, the standard of the data. It's not about the interfaces. Mm. Uh, it's not about the code. So if you want to write a completely new front end that's, that sends data that's compatible with everybody else, they, when they bring up something over and they drag and drop it, then that would be fine. Uh, so, um have you set up a format then for, for the pattern language that, you know, for the service system patterns? Not yet. Yeah. I haven't gotten that far. No. Yeah, that, that's the issue. So, so how did it go in COSI or the other um, places? I mean, do you have other other people? Pe people people, are, people are interested, yeah. but I, you see, I haven't gotten to the conversations for action, and I'm actually trying to avoid that to some extent because I need to focus on my dissertation again. Yeah, right. So, so I, I, this is all, all for orientation, and and possibilities. Uh, okay. So where am I? So partly, if you can get a few more people just playing with this, then at the time things develop, there'll be a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. You know, people trying it out. Yeah. It. But uh, but uh, but this is kind of the entry position I have is is you know I, we could have a conversation about I don't want to do federated wiki. And it's like, okay, like, you know, but then we're moving backwards, right? We're not moving forwards, and you, you run into the issue that you're now inductive consensual. You do not have multiple perspectives. And so I've, I've tried to reduce the barrier as much as I could with the, uh, with the instructions here. So if, you know, if these instructions are insufficient, then I can try to help you with it, or we can get support from people um, in the community. Um, they, they're quite helpful. Um, so, so that that's why on on this list, uh, as we move back here, so the first the first thing is um, is federated authored content. So, you know, do we get buy-in on that as a, as as beginning service system thinking and doing that? The second thing is uh, around the federate around the generated pattern language, is um, we need to reorient for um, unfolding wholeness, and and this this you get into the issue about. Um, why do a pattern language in the first place? Uh, and and so Alexander's 2012 book is the, you know the the battle for life and beauty on the earth, and and uh, I think a lot of the criticism around the software community's use of pattern language is it actually doesn't help the users. Mm -hmm. They're using it as a way of describing code among themselves, but it doesn't make the end product better. Mm -hmm. So that's like carpenters going around and saying you know we can describe how we're going to hammer things in, but the house still falls apart. You know, so, um, so there's, there's. Um, I think that if we're going to start service system thinking, we really want to think about the service system and how service systems can be approved. And I don't think that the current pattern form um, is sufficient. Now, we have to work through that and start writing patterns and alter and looking at them alternative ways. But it's going to be a double loop learning thing as opposed to just trying to plow through creating patterns. And so that makes uh, sense. It seems like you, you couldn't use a kit of parts to kind of string together, um, you know, effective services. There, yeah. Maybe they could help you think about missing pieces, or kind of like the group work step, an expert facilitator, maybe able to 
uh, identify gaps in their practice and gaps in their knowledge. You know, that's but it seems a little like it would be a little atomistic. Yeah. Because yeah. services have you have to think in terms of you know processes and value co-creation relationships among entities and things. And yeah. It's not very atomistic. So th what I need to work through, and I actually uh, probably need to write this for my plot paper, is working through the ideas about um, generative code. And so we start getting into, um, it's directly related to morph. Now I've, I've been just doing this over the last couple of days to make sure that people get an idea about what this is all about, because it gets really deep really fast. And, and, th and this is why it, it's helpful to have systems thinkers, because you see a word like morphogenesis, and it's kind of like, there's two responses to that. It's one is, I wonder what it is. The other one is, uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, wasn't he the guy in the Matrix? <laughs> That's the third one. So the, uh, the idea of wholeness. Uh, uh, so this, this is where he says, uh, previously unknown phenomena are called life or wholeness has been observed. And, and so trying to understand this, so I was talking about the Tur Turkish carpets. Uh, we have to be careful, uh, and, and this is where not just working on pattern language, but having a domain to focus the pattern language on is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, because if we start talking about Alexander saying, you, know, you bring up two Turkish carpets, like almost everybody prefers the one on the left to the one on the right. Um, when we start designing service systems, I, I think we want to get into that sort of game, which is here is a design of a service system, here's an alternative design of a system. What we don't want to do is start doing quanti uh, quantitative stuff and saying, this is twice as good a design as that, or, you know, like, yeah. and getting into value, because it's, it's going to be a sinkhole if we do that. Uh, it'd be much better to say, um, if, we go, if I was referring earlier to um, the uh, multi-service center, so in San Francisco, because it's an urban area, we have to design like this. Uh, at Hunt Point, because it's out away from the city, you have to design in a different way, and, and it and and you might want some features that are because you walk there, and you want some other features because you drive there. You know, that sort of discussion you want to be able to have. You know, do you actually want the site larger, physically larger, because it's a suburban site and people are willing to walk longer if they can drive to the door? You know, that sort of stuff. Um, and the unfolding is a really interesting idea, and, um, and this is starts getting... Um, where these things have changed, and so um, the on the living neighborhoods uh, dot org site, uh, I asked Michael Mahaffey and Ward about what this site was, because it's uh, it started in two thousand five, and and there seems to be updates in two thousand six, but when you get beyond that, it's like well, I can't tell if archive dot org is just crawling more frequently or where the content changed, and uh, the response I got from Michael was that. All that content was written by Christopher Alexander in 2005 and 2006. Mm -hmm. And so he's actually put papers on there that are unpublished. Uh, but it's like version 17 of generative codes, you know, November 2005. That's the sort of stuff you've got. So uh, it, it's not as polished as the... Well, so it's, it's after the nature of order, mm -hmm. but it's before the, uh, the battle for life and beauty on the earth, the 2012 book. But the 2012 book is written like a story. It's not written in the same way. So I'm finding that some of the content on the livingneighborhoods.org site is helpful. Uh, it describes stuff like, okay, what do you mean by unfolding? Um, and so it's I didn't been interesting. He'd been so productive. I mean, has anyone? I haven't. I'm still working my way through the nature of order. I probably will be for some time. Well, well, yeah, else here, I, 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 I'm not going to do it yeah. that way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I need to be a little more purpose oriented. Yeah. Like, so I. I I, I can't didn't even know there was this 2012 book. <laughs> and it's not, yeah. So the the battle for beauty and, and like beauty, yeah, yeah. And and so um, mm. so the unfolding, uh, the the way I've been describing unfolding to people that they don't get it is that you you would actually like to have a building that is better on day two than it is on day one. Yeah. And so there's a beauty or a, a durability or some sort of nature that uh, unfolds over time. And most things are not constructed that way. It's not a bit like Stuart Brand's thing about Victorian houses. Yeah. They've got, somehow you can do stuff with them and yes. they kind of evolve through living in them, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. But they do remain recognizable. So sure. It's not, I mean, it's still a Victorian house, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
And, and, and so get, getting the service systems, can we get the service systems that improve over time? And, and, and you get into now designing, and, and, and this is where we get, um, I found this interesting reference on teleological systems development and ateleological systems development um, with this interesting table that I put over. Um, and so um, in the, in the a frame of information systems, uh, so in Trono wrote, wrote this article, if, if you think, for example, you're, you're building an airline reservation system, that's really teleological because yeah. you just want to do transactions. But the wiki platform itself is ateleological. You build the platform so that people can build something else, but you actually don't know what the content is on the wiki. Yeah. So it's a different philosophy. And, and one of the things that we, we need to figure out thinking about service systems is whether we should be ateleological or teleological or somewhere in between. Well, or at different points in the experience. I mean, so if there's, you know, if a, if a, I mean, what are the goals for the service experience? I mean, for airline reservations, the value is received is going to be as qualified by the customer, the end user. And so mm -hmm. I don't yet see a way of evaluating the end experience or designing for the the experience of touch points or service moments that would be related to a service system. Right. So that's a whole layer that I'm interested in. I don't even see, you know, uh, discussed in service systems yet. Yeah. And yeah. That's. I mean, when it really comes down to, you know, being good in the market and 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 having, you know, being being a better service, being a better airline, having having um, you know a better online bookstore, better product. Uh, product service system, it's going to be as experienced by you know, thousands or millions of, of people. So there could be a mix of these. Yeah. Two in fact, I'm, I'm wondering whether it needs a sort of idea of recursion, that, that, that the, the fundamental platform is ateleological, but it accommodates multi-teleological yeah. subsystems that are generated by local adaptation. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's actually... Um, and then, then those yeah. teleological models could become ateleological if they're opened up for larger. Yeah, yeah, yeah because other people then take them up and use them in yeah. new ways. Yeah. So, so one of the things that Introna says in in the article as you go down is that um, you need protocols for that if it's or otherwise it could get chaotic. So that's one of the reasons. Yeah. 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 So, so, so Alexander's pattern language is ateleological. Yes. And so it, it's a really interesting. Um, challenge problem because when you're designing a service system out of a pattern language using a, a, a generative pattern language then you, you 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 run into the issue that if someone wants a goal how am I going to know this better like if you start working with systems engineering community they may want to get to that you know let's show that this is actually better mm -hmm. and you kind of go well I don't have a metric for you I have this idea of wholeness which is like, what's hold us? Like that, <laughs> and that, that's how we get into this trap of, about uh, that. And so, so um, well, there are built-in principles and values with, uh, that come with uh, uh, come with uh, Christopher Alexander's point of view. Yeah. So he can do that because he and his people are going to be um, at the highest level of their craft and yeah. training already. So they've got competency. They can use a set of principles, and they've already have a. Um, you know, they have uh, built in a, you know, their, their design principles around centers and, and wholeness and holes that, uh, that they will be able to evolve to. Mm -hmm. You know, and architecture is very different than system of systems engineering in that mm -hmm. way too, mm -hmm. um, you, which wouldn't be so principles-based, but needs to be very well-directed usually. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder if some of that's just Christopher's preference too. Um, um, uh, or Alexa, you know, Chris Alexander's preference for working from a strong base of principles and values. Well, again, as, as, a, as a, a systems thinker, I can see that uh, for him, emergence is okay. Yeah. Uh, but if, you know, if, if you're not comfortable with emergence, then you really are going to be teleological, right? Well, have you seen how Frank Gehry designs a, a building? I mean, you know, I mean, he will just like s sketch a mess on paper. That ask you in that you will start working, but I mean it's and then you can't afford the air conditioning. <laughs> 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 Sorry, couldn't resist. Okay. 
<laughs> well, so there, there's a lot of power in, in architects being able to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then a lot of trade-offs with the client. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, I, I was just working on this page, so it's actually not done well. Layering systems of centers. Uh, one of the things that comes up in the 2012 book by Alexander uh, is the way that he actually does this is he takes a pattern language of the land and a pattern language of the building campus and he overlays one on top of the other. Mm. And, and so that is really inobvious when you've read the earlier work, you don't understand it's actually two systems mm. on top of each other. And so what happened was that uh, um, there's a, 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 on the campus there's a, a natural place, um, uh, a natural trough, right. and then there's a, a, you know, so that's where the uh, water should go. Right. And he was trying to figure out the entrance and how it comes in, and so he set it up. But then actually when they started working on it and building the you know, little balsa model and stuff like that, they figured out they had to turn it 90 degrees. So the entrance had to change because it couldn't couldn't fit within the way the land worked, and, and so um, the the so the centers that he had were like like the judo hall and the library and the lake and stuff like that. But then situating those on top of the actual land is is something. Yes. So there's a constraint that prevents him from going back and redefining the landscape. Uh, no, that, well, that's what he was doing originally. So uh, in, in the book, so, so this is where he, he, he works against trying to create blueprints, right? So, so the ideal thing is to actually go on site and he, he put flags up. And so, you know, this is where the entrance is going to be and then he can move it an inch or a couple of inches and stuff like that. Uh, and, but the, the actual layouts where he did the 90 degree flip was he, he did scale models back in Berkeley. So it wasn't in Japan when he did that, and, and they said that's how they figured out how to do it. But, but the systems of centers and, and trying to get that coordination is, is an interesting thing. That it's, it, uh, like reading the nature of order, you wouldn't be able to understand that's the way he's going to do it. Who's that's why. Centers? Is that centers of rotation? Well, it beca because he hadn't put the lake in. Yeah. So, so you know, there's a trough and then there's a rise. Yeah. And so, you know, how do you want it? Because when you come in the front, you want to see over the lake and you want to see a building on the other side of the lake. Yeah. But if you come in the wrong way, then, you know, so, so there's actually some landscaping involved too. But, but I think this is talking about systems, you're now talking about a slower changing layer and a faster changing layer, right? So the slowest changing layer is the landscape and then the faster changing is the buildings on top. And you can change the landscape but you, you can only do it once. <laughs> you do it at the beginning. You can't do it after you started constru construction. So, so the, some of that be worked out because now we're talking about service systems. Are we thinking about service systems in terms of layers and speeds and you know this sort of stuff? So, I haven't worked any of that stuff out. But uh, that's that's where I think. Um, you, you, you have to be up to date in Alexander's work. Certainly, I've not seen anything in the, in the um, software development world where they really should be talking about software architectures and then lining things up like this, one on top of each other, but I don't hear those kind of discussions happening. It would, it would seem with service systems that the, one of the equivalents to the landscape would be um, uh, IT platforms that you have no control over that you're mm. going to be using. Mm -hmm. So internet bandwidth, um, bandwidth capacity, um, uh, providers, platforms, policies, uh, data providers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, SQL database systems, cloud systems that you could mm -hmm. bring in as resources rather than building your own. Yeah. But with oh, you're going to have to have really good uh, service level agreements across those um, layers. Mm -hmm. So I mean they. Uh, with those different uh, providers, IT providers, because uh, if any one of them breaks, you've got you know a chain of responsibility across all of them. Yeah. But you don't want to build all those yourself. So you have right. to choose which layers you know are going to be part of your system, your service landscape. Yeah. You know, and and where you're going to actually people this landscape. Yeah. You know, where is the human in the loop? And, mm -hmm. and that's another. Design. Well, this is really interesting. Okay. Um, then the creating interactive values I'd spoken to before, um, uh, and we went through the uh, IKEA example. Um, I don't have the, oh, I do have the diagram in here. 
Um, but, uh, but again, trying to incorporate that into the pattern language, um, I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, let me repeat that benefit of people weren't here earlier. That's an example of an embedded image, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's easier to... static image. image so. I've, I've been talking to Ward because there's also um, recently been a slide wiki, and I was asking, what can we learn from slide wiki? Um, so the, the typical way that, that we've been looking at value before in the economic way was as added value, which is really cost. So you have a, a supplier and you know, they build any parts and then the distributor um, adds some cost to it and then the consumer adds product. Uh, Norman Ramirez in, in designing Interact Strategy had proposed uh, looking at IKEA uh, where um, if you look as an example, you have the uh, um, suppliers to IKEA You've got IKEA, who's acting as the uh, uh, sig uh, provider signatory. Uh, customer signatory could be the father of, of the household or the mother, and the beneficiary is the family. And so the, yeah. the co-production happens because um, and uh, IKEA serves as the prime mover, and they organize so that uh, the uh, the father assembles the furniture, creates value that way. But the way that you look at value is. The value that is created in the system is the interactive value between the father providing the furniture to the family. Um, and, and so th th having, having this idea of value is a lot different from um, traditional economic view. It reminds me of conversations I've had uh, uh, around an idea of the reversal of the value chain. That if you think of a value chain, you're adding value, and, and that's the traditional way. But yeah. Uh, as, a, as a friend of mine, ex HP lab director, put it, actually you only have the value of the tomato when you bite it. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. same. You, you only have the value of the IKEA chain when you actually, you know, the chest of drawers is assembled. Yeah. Um, it's not all the processes that lead up to it that would traditionally be added value and value-added tax are actually. Yeah. Um, you know, misleading. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the, the phrase I've been using, um, so I was talking to Jim Spore about this, and I was talking about the value in the enjoyment of yeah. the service, and w how do you value the enjoyment of the service. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, again, I'm not sure that we want to quantify that. I just think we want to, we prefer A over B. <laughs> well, I, I switched broadband service, and it kept breaking down, and it was a real pain in the ass. But, but they had... Um, a, a service provision, uh, you know, call somebody up, and it, well, I come from Yorkshire, north of England, it's a Yorkshire accent because of a Sheffield uh -huh. centre, not one in India, uh -huh. uh, and, and very, very civil guys, very rational, uh -huh. and, and, you know, I came away feeling really good that although my internet was crap and it had <laughs> broken down, that somehow I was being looked after. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they yeah, did yeah, eventually yeah, fix it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean that 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 you can't you can't put a I mean you know put star rating on it. It doesn't give the meaning of it. Yeah. 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 One thing I like about the uh, uh, Norman Ramirez diagram, it's actually a little bit like the PCM, the process process uh, chain mapping. Okay. Uh, or is that the at the PCM, which um, re which reveals all the different aspects that go into the process from uh, yeah. the backstage production to the the know the, the the process surrogates to the, the service interaction the use and the continued kind of the life cycle of it so I just wonder if there's I realize you're looking at some of the other you know I star and and the object uh, process model yeah that in a way for service design you need almost more of a, a narrative a visual narrative that shows relationships with that so I'm just yeah wondering if you could probably learn some things from the process process uh, chain mapping. Yeah, th th this actually is, uh, this is kind of sneaky. This is actually um, object process methodology because the rectangles are, are objects. Oh, it uh, is. The ovals, right. the ovals are processes. Oh, okay. And so, 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 yeah, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to use it and see if it works. And we'll, over yeah. time, I'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. I just realized there's a, a call I, should, I need to jump into for a little bit, so I'll stand okay. back for a second. Okay. Um, so let's see. A 
So I'm just going to dig in a little bit to uh, pattern language. Okay, so this, this is the, the pattern language for the pattern language um, that was being described before. Um, I, I redrawing this a little bit makes it a little bit more system oriented. So a pattern is a recurring structural configuration that solves a problem in the context, containing the wholeness of some whole or system that reflects some aesthetic or cultural value. That was the idea behind it. And this is um, originally uh, Copeland um, that, that, that had written that. And so we have a problem that's in a context, um, and we have a solution that would lead to a resulting context. And we have these forces that are contradict contradictions between um, where you are and where you're going to end up. Uh, and it's it's interesting sort of uh, thought about this because the forces could include uh, unintended consequences. So you fix something in your design and it causes you to break something else, but you may want to do that, right? Uh, there's a rationale and there's related patterns, but this is the basic structure. Um, now part of the, the part that I, I'm not convinced on is for, for service system patterns that we want to call it a problem um, because it's, um, yeah, yeah. it's problematic, right? So you never solve it, really. No. And, and I haven't figured out what we want to call it, or, you know, the, the, I, I see it as... Um, Just putting the word wicked in front of it doesn't help. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, so so there, there's some work to be done around this form, but th this is pretty well the standard form that the Gang of Four and everyone recognizes. Service challenge, like that, yeah. Yeah, it'll be a long-term thing. Does resolution work differently than solution, or is that just... Uh, I, I, it, it, we're going to have to have a workshop just on this. Like, to, to, to me, this is actually buried deeper because, because again, the pattern language community is focused on the pattern, but Alexander is now talking about centers and talking about wholeness, which is what we should be talking about, right? And so I think that if we focus on the centers and the wholeness, and then we can come back and go, okay, in order to get the center and wholeness, we want to represent the patterns in this way. Um, Peter isn't here because we work on health, but the, in the International Futures Forum, there's a, uh, I'm not directly involved in it, but there's a project in healthcare where uh, the, 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 the little group are looking at the provision of support for elderly people. Mm -hmm. And the, the more mechanistic NHS, National Health Service, is, is in the old. Um, kind of pro, uh, s simple process model, you know, that if, if, if elderly people need help to get up in the morning, somebody rushes in, 15 minutes, sorts them out, rushes off to the next one, so on. But, but the, the, the wholeness bit is really the quality of life yes. of that elderly person. Yes. And they've done little experiments where they, they've negotiated um, Depressurizing the 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 um, carers mm. uh, or, or or feelers, what do they call them? So that it's okay to sit around and have a cup of tea. Mm. And you know, this is like completely against the the uh, performance target. Yeah, the ethos. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but they they, they they won that space. But of course, guess what they found? Stuff came out in those extra 15 minutes of informal conversation that really helped feed back into the configuration of the um, of the of the support. So right. it was like the, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud here, because uh, no, no, it, yeah. it's, it's triggering something like um, this, this sort of wholeness and center idea could well be interesting to just um, try and get my head around that, introduce it to those, those guys and see if it helped them make sense of it. Yeah. Because yeah. there isn't any particular software system component in that, but then um, there might well need to be because that might be the only way to break out of the mechanistic uh, uh, bureaucratic model. Well now you're going to be ATL logical, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So so the, 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 there isn't a solution to a problem there's, there's more like a sustaining of a good experience of living, given that you're elderly and have some issues. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's probably some desirable feature or something like yeah, that. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and 
this level of abstraction, the pattern name is generic? Uh, so the, um, they have all sorts of patterns, and so the intersemi gradient that I had before was an example, but even Ward Cunningham was showing you know, the uh, you know, wings of light and you know, all, the, all these other sort of pattern names. And so they're, they're meant to be descriptive of the pattern so that when you talk about it, people go, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, the, way, the, way, the way the patterns are used in the, in the software development community is, is kind of a shortcut so that when I say something, you know something. It's kind of like... Uh, in agile development, they have stand-up meeting because you have the meeting that you're supposed to be like 15 minutes, and so you can you're always supposed to have it standing up so the meeting doesn't last more than 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, so stand-up meeting would be a pattern. And, and how large do you think this pattern language is likely to grow? I I, I think it's unlimited, and so like I, I and so that's why I think that the mentality and I, I've been hearing um, from Ward Cunningham and from uh, Michael Mahaffey about the problem with having the uh, 1977 A Pattern Language Oxford University Press book because people are treating it as a Bible and it was never meant to be a Bible. It was supposed to be something that could help you describe uh, how you want your town or your house to be like. Um, and then you could take some and then use them. But um, as soon as you make it uh, published, then it freezes. Yeah. And it's hard to change. So, uh, taking taking the uh, Oxford, um, the 1977 Oxford stuff, and actually saying, okay, now we're going to use it for service systems, it, it's kind of interesting to do that. So, is there an intersemi gradient that we should be looking at in service systems? And it, it could be, and then we have to rewrite it a little bit in a different way, and you know, how to contribute to wholeness and. So what I'm thinking is, as, as the pattern language gets very, very large, uh -huh. for practical purposes, it will be machine searchable. Yeah, yeah. So what you're talking about is a nickname like the stand-up meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going now. I'm falling back into what I'm familiar with with the interpretive structural model. Okay. As a language pattern. Okay. And in fact, if you describe the problem resolution using an ISM, uh -huh. that could be searchable. In okay. Principle. Yeah. I don't know how, but it's essentially saying let's use the language that we can use in the future, use nicknames as we choose. Yeah. But after a couple hundred nicknames, I won't remember what Peggy looks like and what Sue looks like. I'm gonna yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's the, the upside and downside. I think there's, there's a trade off here because uh, essentially what I've seen Alexander do is every time he comes to a new project then they create a new pattern language local to those people because you have to use the vocabulary of the people that are there right. and so he doesn't bring in the catalog with him as history right. but when we talk about service systems it's like you know going between a hospital and a uh, university and you know how are they different how are they similar we might want something that bridges so I think that's to be discovered so maybe there is only a certain number of words in any human vocabulary. Could be. And that in that culture, they'll have their jargon and their vocabulary, and that's what you live with. Yeah. It's yeah. a living catalog of words rather than a, uh, a gospel. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's see. There's different forms of patterns. There's the design pattern catalog. Uh... Okay, so thinking about whether we could actually draw these things, this is a diagram that I drew where I tried to combine the object process model and um, the I star. So uh, it's, it'll be interesting to have a discussion about whether it's possible or not or desirable. Um, one of the things that, uh, so, so one of the things I learned about, um, and I hadn't thought about this, so the, the person that, that brought a lot of the work into, um, uh, into the software development world was um, Richard Gabriel. And so the history of Richard Gabriel was a, uh, he worked in, the, um, in John, McC John McCarthy's AI lab at MIT. And then he came out and he created, uh, he was one of the people leading in the Lisp programming language. And so uh, he did that, started a company in Lisp, um, wound down the company, did a master's in, in uh, uh, fine art in poetry, <laughs> and then got hired by Bill Joy at Sun to look at the pattern language stuff. And so the way that he approaches pattern language is as poetry. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and so I, I understand that and I appreciate it because he does words, yeah. but I'm not convinced that's the way that most people may work. And so I'm wondering about diagrams and drawings and different mm-hmm. notations yeah. that, so that people don't have to read so much because writing poetry is hard. <laughs> <laughs> information embedded in it yeah. in mm-hmm. the language mm. that probably is relevant to this type of, of transfer of meaning. Mm. Well, when, when you see in, in the book, when Alexander draws, he sketches, of course, he sketches the centers of the land and then sketches the centers of the buildings. And so he even describes them, but then the first thing you do is you look at the sketches, right? And you kind of go, oh, I see, this is where the lake is going to be. And so... So I, I think that there's there's some way of doing representation that we don't have to read so much. Um, well, it's good. going back here a hell of a long way, but I remember when I first came, came across De Bono's little book on management, no, management thinking, and he had all these doodles of, of different forms of thought mm. used in management, you know, with arrows and squares mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. There may be some kind of symbolic um, uh, I don't know what the, the pattern behind the story or something it could be searchable, I don't know but, uh, but we certainly haven't got one yeah okay um, in that image that you just showed that was, it looked to be like a, a, a meta level pattern like there were patterns within patterns um, so, so this one, so the, the top part is, uh, all the stuff up top is in um, I-star. Yeah. But then when you get down to the resource level, I think then you can start talking about objects and processes. Because this stuff up here is all intentional about soft goals and hard goals and tasks, task goals, stuff like that. And so I, I, I just hadn't thought about it until I started looking at, well, how is, how is it that we actually capture the idea of wholeness? And, uh, and function instructor process isn't going to do it. So we're going to need something else. Um, and this, this could be it or it could be something else. But I, I, I don't see any incompatibility between the two communities. Uh, because if you look at software development, the uh, I-STAR people are requirements people. And then you kind of go, how, how do you translate requirements down into actually building it? Um, and then object process methodology is more engineering sort of stuff. So. Um, probably have to go back to some of the uh, to the people that originally did it and just talk to them about it and does find out whether it's compatible. Does wholeness, wholeness connote a closed loop? Wholeness, uh, not in the Alexander sense necessarily. It, mm-hmm. he, he's using it as uh, as an aesthetic, I think, more than anything else. Is that you fit in this place? Okay. Yeah. So the last thing that I, I've been thinking about is um, is whether we could um, build from social system thinking towards service system thinking. And so um, the the way that I think about social system thinking is uh, socio-psychological, socio-technical, socio-ecological uh, approaches. And the way I've been drawing this recently, just again, tr- I'm trying to make these things clearer because you won't get it. So um, in effect, when we're talking about the Tavistock uh, approach, Tavistock legacy, we have social organization, of which of the social psychological approach uh, perspective, which was an interaction between the person and the organization, the socio technical, which was with the machines, and then socio ecological, which is the contextual field, the larger world. Right. Um, when we start talking about service systems, the first thing about service systems is that you actually need parties, you need multiple parties inside um, the core. And so I thought that you have a customer signatory and a provider signatory, and they make commitments, and then there's the idea of offerings that Norman and Ramirez have. Um, and so that's kind of the core. From there, you have uh, the engagement, because the first question is, can you get this, uh, this system started uh, with uh, the identification of the bi- beneficiaries, who the providers are? Uh, you've got development of the service system and then you've got enjoyment of the service system. And so I'm not sure where that's going, but I, I think that we should actually be somehow extending the work um, because it's, it's not like we don't know about, about um, social service 
social systems thinking. It's just how do we uh, adapt some of that work and uh, and help uh, ad help advance it. That's a triggered a memory of a project I was involved in. Um, what was it? Three, maybe four years ago now. Uh, five years. The the, the RSA, the Royal Society of Arts in mm -hmm. the UK, um, had some funding to do some more adventurous exploration of um, drugs and alcohol problems in mm. a particular location. And um, they decided to do a user-centric study where they got um, uh, former or recovering users um, to be trained to do the interviewing of the users mm -hmm. um, and um, brought that information I, and I was involved in doing a bit of kind of very sketchy systems mapping you know how things joined together or didn't join together um, as, a, as, a, as a background but I'm just looking at your diagram there and one of the things that came out was that the both the X and the actual users all said, the problem with your service is we have our crisis 24-7, not when just in your opening hours. Mm -hmm. And the, the technological bit was um, uh, ideas about um, um, access using mobile phones, whatever, mm -hmm. that... that, 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 that um, a sort of buddy principle that actually people could help each other, not just the professionals, so-called. And um, I don't know quite where I'm going with this, but I just have a feel that, that, that something in this would help decode what that project was about mm -hmm. um, in a way that they, they sort of did, but didn't, wouldn't relate it to this. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the customer signatory was, um, uh, would come out in things like the, the users saying, um, oh, don't go and see Dr. So-and-so, he's just a book. Ah, yeah. Uh, you know, they wouldn't sign up to that, but they'd sign up to seeing um, Fred or Mary, who had, uh -huh. um, you know, been through it and come out the other side, mm -hmm. and, and were, were sort of volunteers or, or even employed to... Mm -hmm. uh, to support, and again, that was something of uh, going back to the wholeness language of, of, of um, uh, you know, I, I'm not just a user with a problem; I'm a person. You know, the, there may be reasons why I'm in this fix. That um, you know, not whole person and the whole world. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But it was a very adventurous. Um, in fact, they were going to roll it out in. And I've lost touch with it, but this is triggering me. Maybe I'll <laughs> look, look in my uh, contact list and see if I can contact them and say, how's it going? What are you learning? Because yeah. it, it would um, be an interesting little case study. In, in the service systems thinking, that seems to me, of course, the language other talks of language of business and business transactions and material exchange. In the social systems thinking area, it sounds more like um, in the conceptual or cognitive exchange. So it almost looks like the worlds are divided into a cognitive exchange world and a material world. The only reason that strikes me is that it seems to map onto that whole one scheme that John was talking about in the other session mm -hmm. uh, of a parsing between the two. That, that really defines a frame from which connections might be drawn. Not, not that it separates them as much as it puts them into some sort of playing field. Well, I, I think where the service system thinking is different is, is the value. Um, because in, in, I, I don't see this discussion about, like, it's implicit. It, of, cor of course it's in the model, but the question is making it explicit and making mm -hmm. that's what the conversation's about. Um, because um, um, in, in, in discussing the history, so um, uh, in... in Two years ago, in the IFSR conversation, 
um, we had the opportunity to revisit the um, socio-technical, socio-psychological, and socio-ecological approaches, and we had Marilyn Emery with us, who gave some of the perspective. And so she corrected some misperceptions we had that uh, it was first socio-psychological, socio-technical, and socio-ecological, because the Tavistock anthology comes in three volumes, and that was the order in which the work was published. But it, she says actually what happened is all three per perspectives happened simultaneously. It was just a matter of publishing and working on projects at that time that they came out in that sequence. Uh -huh. uh, so, so it's not that they weren't working on socio-psychological, but the first projects they had were primarily socio-psychological. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a problem-driven sort of thing where they started doing research and it, it was about organizations in different ways, right? Um, as we move towards service systems, uh, I think that the question of value starts coming up. And so, uh, as an example, um, is there a value, what's the value in the engagement? Yes. So, so, do you do this with one party, do you do it with multiple parties, you know, do you create the network, do you just have a simple transaction? Uh, what's the value in the development? You know, is it speed, where, or, or is it uh, robustness that you're trying to optimize? And, and enjoyment, it's like how long, how far, uh, you know, those sorts of things. And so you, know, you, start, you start talking about things like um, uh, Airbnb or Uber or these sorts of things and how they structure value differently. Um, I, I think it'll be an interesting conversation when we get it fleshed out uh, because the, the way the service systems are being designed now is a little bit different, a lot more uh, co-production. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't see the value in the social systems? It, it, it's, not, it's, it's, not uh, it's not the most salient thing. It's there, but it's implicit. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they, it, they just don't draw attention to it as much. So there are values there, certainly, I would say. But it's similar to the, to the story you were sharing about mm -hmm. the um, peanut butter case, because in actual fact, there, it's like if you think of Uber, you know, we're, we're, I'm providing this service to you, okay? And in the healthcare case you gave, it's the prior you know, um, individuals who have had that illness mm, themselves yeah. or are helping basically. So now you've got people co evolving, you know, the, the, the people are yeah. actually the service. Yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than here, it's really tradi traditionally at least it's a corporation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it, it was, they, they began to experiment with different support services but those were definitely in the in the co-production yeah. area you know that, that it was I don't know participative it was um, you have to have been one to help one kind oh, of thing yeah. yeah but they did a similar experience <coughs> in uh, I think it was somewhere in Philadelphia or something where there was an uh, individual who saw a, a young man gunned down I think he had some unusual background he was a tech guy or something like that an entrepreneur and he took this as his calling, and he uh, organized for these students. What they discovered is that a lot of people, that the prime users of the healthcare uh, facilities and costs were these people who lived in these poor socioeconomic group and these huge high rises. And um, what they organized is for these high school uh, mm -hmm. students and um, uh, first year, second year university to go out in their community and provide support. So they went in and they acted like community services for mm. in the UK and um, asked questions and they learned that, you know, the woman who, you know, couldn't get over a house on oxygen, who was the biggest user of a local emergency room, she was like going in just about every week mm. basically. And they discovered um, little things that could be fixed. So there's another example mm. where mm. You, you're, you're actually using other people in the community because mm. we don't have a structure today that covers those type of costs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's the, 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 I guess I don't think the, the models are as simple as we're trying to make no, them big, no, basically. No. You know, especially if you add on technology, because I know um, organizations that are providing technology to those community workers so mm. that they can actually engage differently because mm. quite often you discover that you know it's because people don't have you know they run out of food stamps in this country as a reason why they're not mm. getting food which is the reason why their diabetes is out of control yeah, yeah, yeah. being able to figure out if you're running a community health organization you know who needs to 
who do you, how do you how do you optimize your time, your care time basically? So if you can have some in this case, what they're doing is they're getting these individuals to notate their mood and you know um, other elements that feed back to the community organization mm -hmm. that then said, okay, so I don't need to go and see everyone, I only need to see, go and see these people today. Mm -hmm. And these people also feel connected because they get to write about their moods or whatever. So mm -hmm. you've got all these innovations happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. David? Yeah. You, um, the, you introduced the whole service systems thing in terms of um, the chief, the chief, and the IKEA mob. Does that also apply to say, um, say somebody hangs out a shingle as a, a counselor? Sure. And, and then it also. How about for an AA group? Uh, I think it could be. Yes. Um, uh, there, there, there's, there's no restriction on on purpose or why like so they, but the, you get into discussion of value right uh, the value doesn't have to be monetary um, it could just be a, a preference um, so I, I think that the idea of service is general um, the it, so in in the social systems work there's a lot of purpose um, and and I think that value and purpose are closely related, but uh, the value is a little different, right? So, um, I, I think just just orienting towards that way uh, will change our perspective. Now, um, I don't think that we'll know for sure until we actually start trying it uh, and seeing how it hangs together. So, is a key given as the example just? Because individuals are more, they're involved because they're putting together the product? Uh, IKEA was the original 1983 Norman Ramirez case. And so that's that's why I cite it. Uh, but but is, it, is, it, is there something unusual about IKEA's business model or could we apply that to the, any, anywhere where the um, consumer is more engaged? Yeah, it, so it was originally the idea of co-production. That's That was the original one in 1983. And so why was IKEA successful and, and how was it creating value and how was it different from traditional furniture manufacturers? So, mm -hmm. so the idea of co-production at that point was quite new. You can go with Betty Crocker cakes for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, value, we talk about that word value because I agree, it's, it generally denotes something more on the business side. But um, they're now referring to our healthcare system as a value-based healthcare system and we need to think about it like that because we need to manage costs. And uh, just so it's interesting them using that word because to use that word in terms of health care delivery, I mean how do you have physicians? How do you, how's we people think about yeah. a value based system? That's a, that's a very good idea because I don't think that the customers recognize the co creation aspect of the business unit. No. So you have you have customers and providers, providers who see it, customers who don't. And so you have this perceptional mismatch. And also there's just this comprehension of, of like entitlement because it's not like, I mean, I can't go and buy any car I want to. It's like I'm not entitled to it, am I? I mean, there are choices that I make. So, so it seems that, you know, we, we should be able to get the very best of care. Um, and, you know, we have an endless appetite for that. Okay. So maybe we'll think differently about value in two courts. Okay, I, I'm just going to wrap up. Um, so, uh, so this has been the history of um, of where I've been trying to get the ideas, and so I've been developing this as I go along. Uh, started the presentation with Nkosi uh, in January, and then um, more at twenty uh, in the June conference they had. Although um, I, most of the content is actually new, the, I, I I've been working on this pretty steadily for the last uh, month. Um, I was in Poland uh, just uh, last week and presented to the services community. Uh, it's going to be interesting trying to get various versions of this uh, explanation because at the Nkosi meeting, um, the, the, the first time was like five hours and the second time was like six hours. Uh, then when I presented at, uh, uh, in Krakow at the ISIP meeting, I had 20 minutes. <laughs> and here I've had like, you know, three, four hours and so... Uh, when I, the POP conference is, I don't know what it's going to be, but when I get to the RSD conference, I think I'm back to 20 minutes again. 
So, so I'm, I'm trying to find different ways of expressing this and, and getting the ideas across. Um, but it, this is really a work in process. So um, this is certainly not plenary material at the state it's at. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's uh, searching out uh, people that may be interested in working on um, this sort of thing. And uh, part of it, you've been through the Federated Wiki now, so it's kind of like people have to be able to do that. But a lot of it, it is actually um, trying to orient towards being able to work remotely because the number of opportunities we have, like if it's really that small a group of people that are actually going to serve as authors eventually, uh, we can't really rely on co-locating. So uh, doing things at e-meetings and doing stuff at home and putting stuff on the web, I think, is the way this community is going to work. So what is the S signal there, the third one down? That's, that's the ISSS. That's a oh, that's L's. <laughs> <laughs> that's an integral. That's an integral. That's not an S. <laughs> well, usually it has, I, it has the rest of it. Yeah. Decided, I think, Sorry. On its own. That's not an S. What do you call it? It's an integral. Oh. And. It's a ma it's math. It's integral. So, so how does this relate to your PhD? Oh, it is doesn't. This, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, what, so what's the subject of your PhD? Uh, open source with private source. So it's a case study of uh, of nine case studies at IBM where they participate in the open source community, but they're also working on commercial products at the same time. Yeah, okay. yeah. So no, this this is a this is a project that that I think that um, Incosi is very interested in working on it. If I can actually structure it to a state where we could actually say what we're working on, right? <laughs> that that's been the challenge. It started off well. I have this idea that we should start doing pattern language on service systems. That was essentially was the, the foundation of it um, last December, and then I'm kind of working on it, and then. Uh, the essentially, I've been trying to get it to the feasible state. So it took me a month to get around the Federated Wiki, because they don't have it well documented. It's open source community, and they're all technical, so they've been managing to work on it. Um, but I, I, uh, the, the funny thing is that Ward Cunningham. So I, I said, well, I want to try using Etherpad. And he goes, oh, can you install that for next week? And I said, you realize the irony of asking the least technical person on this conference call to install the te the technology? It's like that's a pretty high bar. Um, and so I've been thrashing through it. Uh, and, the, and the reason for the pattern language is because ultimately you want to sort of back end this into systems engineering so that it can be thought of as a less conceptually. Right? Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not just systems engineering, it's also designers. Um, I've been finding designers don't work abstractly at all. Uh, so so um, you, you missed a slide at the beginning where I talk about service systems, I talk about the financial systems, water systems, food systems, and people understand that. When you talk about it as a, a configuration of resources, people don't need to understand that. So in, in that sense, I think the pattern language, when you actually say something um, like triage or uh, you know, some sort of pattern where people are being served, I think people will recognize that much more readily than trying to be oh, so abstract. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, great. Cool. Thank you. I actually oh, followed so this. You, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't follow other ones? Uh, the, the program language it just blew past me. <laughs> you don't have a background in it. You've been talking about this for a while, so I can see how it's mature. Yeah, yeah.